Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And it is finally here, Ryder Cup week. Um, one of our favorite events, favorite weeks of the, well, I guess every other year at this point. Um, we've got Pierce Lanou with us, uh, who is you know, a Sunday swing rider and has been with us all year on the podcast, covering the PGA Tour world, if you will. And so um, only right to have him back to kind of preview the Ryder Cup, go through some kind of fun facts about the bags of these players. Um, but Pierce, I mean, this dynamic of the Ryder Cup has really shifted over the last probably year or so because I think if you were to ask any, you know, follower of the Ryder Cup at the conclusion of Whistling Straits a couple of years ago, you would have thought the U.S. had no shot of losing mm-hmm. another Ryder Cup in the near future. And now we're, it seems like things have really evened out since then. Yeah, I was looking at the odds today and the U.S., I think, are just slight favorites. Yep. Um, and I actually... I think Europe's gonna gonna give them a run for their money this mm-hmm. week. I'm I'm worried about about the youngsters they got over there. Yeah, there's it's it's interesting because there's that dynamic of PJ Tour versus um, the DP World Tour, and it's it's tough for the American golf fan. I shouldn't say tough, but a lot of them don't have the visibility of watching these guys. You know, the Bob McIntyres, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the Nikolai Hoygards, and these type of guys that play most of their golf on the DP World Tour. And you don't really get to see how good or how talented they are. Yeah. And actually, the last few weeks now, uh, Ludwig Eber has really lit it up over there, too. So these young guys are sort of peaking at the right time. Yeah. It's a little scary because this isn't to say that the, this you know, <coughs> roster of Americans isn't you know, loaded with talent. But um, there's kind of that wild card factor of, you know, how are they, maybe these, these young guys on the European tour might rise to the occasion even more or so when the lights are on them and the pressure's on yeah. them. Some of these guys perform better in those scenarios. So that's kind of the scary part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Ludwig Aberg is going to be a problem for mm-hmm. for some of the guys on the U.S. squad. And I just kind of like the, the the depth of the European team a little bit better than the, the U.S. guys. I mean, on the U.S., you've got kind of the middle-of-the-pack guys. You've got, like, Harmon and, and you know, Wyndham and Ricky, um, Sam Burns. I kind of I kind of lean towards the other side of the the table. The I like the Hoygaard, Aberg, McIntyre, kind of mm-hmm. Fleetwood type group. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's going to be really close. I think we're going to yeah. be in for some really exciting matches for sure. I think I think kind of like the Solheim Cup. I'm hoping it comes down to the last few matches on Sunday. It always makes it more exciting. But mm-hmm. you know, on paper, I think. The U.S. probably is the the better overall team, but I think I think some of those young European guys are are being underrated. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I think and one of the things I wanted to kind of go over too was it's funny that you mentioned the depth as something you really liked about the European team because if you had asked me that a year ago, you know, proving the Ryder Cup, I, I would have said the depth of the European team yeah. would be their their biggest flaw, right? Like their weakness, right? They have some huge big names, you know, Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Victor Hovland right now. Um, some guys that are playing really, really good golf. But then after that, it kind of seemingly would drop off. I mean, Sepp Strzok is not a name you would have thought of uh, yeah. a year ago. He's But he's played awesome golf in 2023. Uh, obviously, we talked about Aberg a lot. Um, Nikolai Heigard, Hoygaard, excuse me, has played really good coming down the stretch here. So, like, these guys that they've kind of – it's been exactly what European yeah. what the European team needed was – some guys they could rely mm-hmm. on to fill those last few slots on the team. So again, very scary um, as a you know an American fan and wanting Team USA to win. Uh, it's going to be. I, I think I agree with you in that. Um, it's going to be a photo finish on Sunday. Yeah. Singles. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm kind of already thinking ahead, wondering what those those marquee matches on. Oh, I know. On Sunday are going to be. I'm hoping maybe like a like a Rory Brooks. Face off or a Rom Brooks face off, maybe a Scotty, Scotty uh, Hovland mm-hmm. rematch from the FedEx Cup That's a few the best weeks part. ago. There's so many fun yeah. matchups that yeah. can be made here I for think. sure. There's, I mean, they're all going to be good, yeah. but I think you know there's going to be those few matches that kind of stick out. Mm-hmm. And there's always, I, I think back to, it's it's funny to kind of separate the Ryder Cup from regular golf, and I think it's. I think Rory, I saw a clip of him talking about it this week and how it's just, he plays for so much more. And I remember actually after 
they had officially lost to Team USA at Wilson Straits. He did an interview, I believe, with Sky Sports, I want to say, right afterwards, and he was, like, emotional about it, you mm-hmm. know, just talking about their team connection and how, you know, he never wanted to lose another one again. And so there's – it's funny. They don't play for money in this event, but – there's so much more at stake for them, and, and you can tell they're so much more invested. And you watch their reactions to made putts or missed putts on the green, and you can see it. So that's why I love this event, and that's why I'll be getting up bright and early, you know, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, to get as much action in as I can. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a fun change of pace. You know, it's outside of the President's Cup. It's essentially the only time where you get to play for someone other than yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you've got you've – got, 11 other teammates relying on you to to do your part and, and you don't want to let them down so yeah the kind of the intensified emotions and and um, you know playing for your country and playing for your teammates it's definitely yep. definitely brings out the best of these guys and it always you know every every Ryder Cup we have we have a lot of fireworks, so I think yep. I think we're in for the same this, this you year. You won't see any sponsor logos or anything like that on you know the 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 shirts they're wearing, mm-hmm. you know their hats they're wearing. Is Brooks gonna, gonna be wearing be... his live shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna doubt it. I'm gonna doubt it, especially <laughs> for this event. Um, it is funny. We were talking before we recorded that Brooks has to travel from the Live Chicago event mm-hmm. that he's kind of contractually obligated to play yeah. right before uh, the Ryder Cup. But yeah, I wonder how Bryson feels about that coming off of another after winning that one. Yeah. Another victory. Um, that's actually let's get into that kind of right now because um, let's kind of start with Team USA here and go through kind of the roster and then we can maybe discuss uh, if you know there's a couple selections where I know I felt like things maybe should have been different, but I, I sort of under I certainly understand uh, Zach Johnson's thinking. So in alphabetical order, I'm going to go by last name. I know there's you know there was the six auto uh, selections and then there was the captain's picks but um, so the team members are in alphabetical order by last name Sam Burns, Patrick Cantlay, Wyndham Clark, Ricky Fowler, Brian Harmon, Max Homa, Brooks Kepka, Colin Morikawa, Xander Shoffley, Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. So um, you know we, we talked before a little bit about kind of those guys that were on the fringe who you know and there was some maybe 50-50 selections that Zach Johnson had to make but um, out of those I mean, do you, do you like that that team? Is that the right team? Do you think there's maybe a couple out there that are maybe a little frustrated that Zach didn't give him the right call? Yeah, I like the team. I think it's a good team, but I don't think it's the right team. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's – those discussions are obviously, you know, you're picking at, at hairs. But I think, I think Keegan Bradley mm-hmm. kind of got robbed of a spot there. Uh, you could make a case for Bryson and the way he's played this season. Obviously, he's not on the PGA Tour, so that that certainly plays a factor in his points and where he's ranked on the on the standings for the Ryder Cup team. Um, so yeah, I think I think Keegan and and uh, Bryson, those are two names that certainly jump out in, in that conversation of you know should these guys have been on the team over guys like maybe Justin Thomas, who obviously we know had a really poor 2023 season Sam Burns I thought was kind of one of those guys maybe right. more borderline than than people think um, I think too what maybe even messed this up to some degree and I don't want to say messed it up because I'm actually very excited to watch this guy play in the Ryder Cup but Brian Harmon yep. winning the Open sort yeah. of really kind of messed the the rankings up right, right. where he jumped up into an auto qualifier spot um, sort of then knocking down these guys like the Keegan Bradley or a Cameron Young or yep. um, some and, of these guys. You know, guys the Tony that, Fina, you forget Tony it. There's Fina, so that, many. There's that so many. would guys. have potentially earned one of those captain's picks yeah. over Harmon, but Harmon goes out and wins the Open by six mm-hmm. and jumps into that spot. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, the biggest ones that have a gripe right now are probably Keegan and Bryson, like you said. Um, there's just no way to really tell how impressive a – win for Bryce, you know, these wins Bryson's are, Bryson's stacking up right now. There's no real way to tell how good they are mm-hmm. with that 48-man field, 54 holes, yeah. no cut. You know, where where does that rank versus all these really high finishes Keegan Bradley's had this year? I mean, where does that stack? And yeah. we'll never really know the right answer to that. So that's kind of where there's a never-ending conversation that will be had there. And 
there's never a right or wrong answer to that, right. in my opinion. Yeah, but, and, and we're going to look silly when, when GT comes out and goes 5-0 right. and again. Yeah. And everyone will be like, okay, you know, the we'll leave it to the the captains yeah. to make their decisions and they you know they know what they're doing but i think uh definitely jt is, has a lot to prove this week he's probably been here in an earful for the past you know however long it's been since the picks were made you know you shouldn't be on the team you, you know you played right. terrible all season you know what gives you the right you know you're just one of the boys blah 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 so i think he's definitely gonna have a, a fire under his under his belly and um you know, anytime him and him and Jordan Spieth pair up together, they usually fare pretty well. So yeah, I'm not I'm not too worried about it. You get but some fireworks out of it too. Yeah, for so sure. Yeah, I think I, I I still believe in JT, and I'm I'm. It's not like I think the team is tanked with him on the on the roster. Uh, um, yeah, of course. But so. I think you're right that people are going to pay attention to his performance a little bit more than maybe the other <clears throat> team members, just because of you know, his, like you mentioned, his performance this season and and some of the other options that were out there for for Zach Johnson. Yeah. But um, I kind of wanted to dive into a little bit of the equipment here, and I've got it all kind of listed out here. Um, of note, on Team USA, I, I know the listeners and viewers do remember the, the Jailbird versus the Crazy uh, kind of a sequence of events this summer where we had multiple Jailbird versus wins over a you know few weeks span. We've got three of them on Team USA this week. Obviously, Ricky Fowler and Wyndham Clark, who... Uh, did win with them this year. Keegan Bradley would have been a fourth, actually, mm-hmm. if he was on the team. And then uh, yeah. <laughs> Colin Morikawa is now playing one, too. So okay. um, there's three of those putters on the team, which is, you know, there's I don't think there's a duplicate other putter on the team or on the roster right now. Um, also of note, you have Patrick Cantlay playing. I mean, his what's in the bag is probably, it would have been great in 2018, and it's still yeah. good today. But you got... A TS3 driver, which is a five-year-old driver. You've got a 915F3 wood, which is eight years, like eight years old. Nine years um, old. You've got AP2 irons, the 718 model, yeah. which is five years old. And SM7 wedges. So, I mean, he, he's just refusing to upgrade his equipment, but clearly it works <laughs> for the guy. So, um, And then lastly, I wanted to mention um, the... The Nike, Nike, excuse me, Nike Vaporfly four, uh, three iron that Brooks is using yep. that Tony Finau also still uses. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I know we've talked about that plenty of times on, on the podcast as well, but that is the oldest kind of utility iron model um, in the bag of Team USA. So um, lots of Titleist throughout. I believe there's five or six Titleist staffers on the, yeah. on the roster out of the 12. Yeah. You've got, you know, you can't lay. You've got Wyndham Clark, you've Brian got Harman, Max Homa, Brian Harmon, um, you've got Jordan Spieth, and then yep. JT as well. JT, so yeah. uh, those are all guys playing Titleist, but there's obviously a mix of, you got Tricks on, you've got um, with, with Kepka, you've got your Taylor Maids with uh, Scotty, and um, you know, you got Ricky Fowler playing the Cobra stuff. Yeah, so and then you got a mix of Callaway. Really I think Burns is Callaway. Yeah. Shoffley as well. Yeah, Zan, yeah. So you kind of have everything represented mm-hmm. there. So. Um, I guess if you were to, let's wrap up Team USA here with sort of, if you were going to pick one or two guys that have to deliver this week um, or have to really come in the clutch here and take down the big names of Team Europe, who are you relying on to do that this week? Well, I mean, Justin Thomas, we talked about, you know, for obvious reasons, he was a controversial pick and, you know, whether or not he should have been picked is, you know, you can debate it all day. But I think for that reason, you know, he, he really needs to perform well and, um, but it, in terms of, you know, taking out the the top guys on the European side, that's where you just need your big guns to, mm-hmm. to play well. So Scotty Scheffler, I, you know, I like he's so good at golf. I'm not expecting him to, to lose, but, you know, he's likely going to be paired up against Rory, mm-hmm. Rom, Hovland, guys like that. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, yeah, I'd say JT, Scotty, and I'm kind of, this isn't really a, you know, a top-end player on the U.S. team, but like you kind of mentioned, I'm excited to see Brian Harmon, and I'm excited mm-hmm. to see Wyndham Clark and what, what those guys bring to the table, obviously being their first time on a Ryder Cup team. So I think they both have games that, that fit the Ryder Cup format well. You know, Harmon's one of those guys who just kind of goes about his business. He's a competitor. You know he's small dude, but he yeah. he he packs a punch, and um, I think you know he's obviously used to the 
being on foreign soil and being the the underdog. So I think that's going to be helpful for them and should be fun. Yeah, I think the way Zach Johnson pairs like Scotty Scheffler is going to be huge, especially kind of in this alternate shot format yeah. where if you get the right mix of ball striking and putting, I mean, you can really destroy a European squad there. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know if that's Scheffler and Harmon. That could be a kind of a fun dynamic duo yeah. there. Um, there's plenty, obviously, ways you could go about it. Um, I know in the past, I think last time, I think was it Cantley and Shoffley were teammates for most of the matches. That so, sounds right. I mean, you know, they played you know, the Zurich together, really friends, and yeah, yeah so. they they have that experience together for sure. So just don't put Scotty with like JT. Right, right. right. They, that, they won't make a part. Ugly <laughs> if it goes that way. So, um, fat. I mean, fascinating to kind of see this whole thing unfold, and I'm very excited for it. Like we mentioned earlier, but. Um, it is taking place in Italy. It'll be, you know, you'll have to get up pretty early to watch some of the coverage, but um, it should be worth it because I think it'll be a great, uh, great Ryder Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, Team Europe now. So we kind of hinted a little bit at sort of the young guys, but let's kind of go over the entire roster quickly and then we'll kind of dive into maybe the more specifics here. But from top to bottom in terms of alphabetical order, uh, Ludwig Aberg, one of those young captain's picks, Matt Fitzpatrick, Tommy Fleetwood, Tyrrell Hatton, Nikolai Hoygaard, uh, Victor Hovland, Shane Lowry, Robert McIntyre, Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Justin Rose, and Sepp Straka. That's, again, a, a <laughs> list of guys that I would have not been scared of a couple years ago, but I am scared of it now. So you have, you have the star power at the top. You have the Rory McIlroy, you have John Rahm, you have Victor Hovland, you know, three of the top five players currently in the world are, are on your team. And then you have a ton of other guys that are really finding their form lately that I, I, I like how it, I like how this is shaping up for Team Europe. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. yeah. I mean, that middle tier is kind of like, I'll call it like the English tier. Mm-hmm. So you've got like Hatton, Fleetwood, yeah, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick yeah. and then you have the veteran Justin Rose. I like those four guys. Like Tommy Fleetwood is in Tyrrell Hatton. I think are going to be really, really good mm-hmm. this year. Um, it would be fun to see them paired together, but you know we'll see how how the pairings shape up. But yeah, then you've got your your young wild card type of guys: yeah. Aberg, McIntyre, and Hoygaard. And even Sepp Straka, I mean, he played really good this year. And, and we know when he gets hot, he he can go on, a, on an absolute tear. Mm-hmm. So for someone like him, I think pairing him with maybe a guy that's a little more consistent might be really dangerous yeah. for the U.S. team yeah, in, in a tough right. tough opponent in, a, in an alternate shot or a four-ball match for sure. I didn't even think – I guess I didn't register that in my mind, but it's totally true. Like, Sepp Straka is a streaky – yeah. player like he'll I mean, as we saw it yeah the, was it the John Deere where he flirted with 59 there I think he was like mm-hmm. 11 under through 14 or something yeah 13 um, so that is a that is a, a, a tricky one where someone more steady Eddie I suppose paired with him could create a pretty solid duo there um, lots of major championship uh, prowess as well the guys yep. that have showed up in the big events um, or consistently contend in them. Uh, so a, a scary group there for sure. So uh, I wanted to go over again some of this equipment stuff that I've got in front of me, and there's a lot of it, but a lot fewer, um, I guess, a lot less Titleist representation on Team Europe. More ping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's, there's some more ping with the irons for sure. You've got, um, that's actually the leading iron brand on Team Europe. When, when you have Fitzpatrick playing, how about this, S55 irons. Yeah. Uh, that's I mean, that's got to be the oldest club, I think, in the bag. And Hovland are just rocking those. And those yeah, are two of like, the best the, iron players. Yeah, Hovland's got that's... the I-210s. So you got, I mean, the S55s are old. I yeah. Mean, that's like a decade old. Yeah. It has to be the oldest club, I think, in the bag for the whole week. And then also of note, with Fitzpatrick, I want to throw in there, I mentioned to you right before, playing a TSR-1 hybrid, which is... For those who don't know, the TSR-1 is sort of the lightweight, high-launch type of um, design from Titleist. It's almost a niche product designed for slow swing speeds. 
But um, clearly Fitzpatrick throws in a, an extra stiff shaft or something and gets that thing to work for him. But um, So that's a very unique combination yeah. of clubs. That I wonder uh, if it's something with the course that maybe, yeah. he, you know, they've been out there practicing, maybe he found that to be a useful... I mean, yeah. obviously, if it's in the bag, right. there's, well, there's a reason for it. But and these guys are so, I mean, every single one of them, they, they, they tinker, they try different things. You know, there's he, that's not in there by accident, so there's yeah. clearly a purpose for it. But that's I did not expect to see S55 irons from a decade ago or a Titleist TSR1 hybrid in a Ryder Cup uh, player's bag, but here we are. Um, other Also of note, in the Fairywood category, there are eight tailor-made Fairywoods on Team Europe, which is... Pretty astounding, actually, considering there's only 12 players. Um, and then I also wanted to throw in the mix as well Justin Rose's bag, which is very unique because he has a tailor-made M3 440 driver. Of course he does. That's like the most Justin Rose thing I've ever heard. Um, that guy. Yeah, he's got because he, he he should never sign an equipment deal ever again. No. Because um, he's got tailor-made M3 and M6 woods. And then he goes down to Cobra for the irons yeah so strange and then the he's back got, into tailor made with the wedges it's um he's got that putter got that, that rose that axis yeah it's, it looks really goofy yeah yeah so he's got he's got what he needs to that and it works right yeah um and then you've got your your john rama is all callaway Roy mcelroy is all tailor made so um but just a fascinating look at that stuff and actually one other note too i wanted to, I, i'm gonna throw in there is fleetwood playing the burner mini driver Oh, it's yeah, kind he's... Kind of a, like a two-wood, if you will. Yeah, he's had that in the bag, I think, for a while now. So that stuff is something to look for if you're a gearhead, uh, those those clubs and how they come into play. But uh, now kind of getting it back into the, the team discussion, is there a pick or two or a player or two that you um, maybe would have switched if you were captain of Team Europe, or do you kind of like the way this squad played out here? I think I think I like the, the European squad. Yeah. And maybe that's just because there's not as many players that were maybe in that conversation for for picks or qualifying but still i just think i think those are the right players like you go mm -hmm. through that list and it like yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. you know there's not a guy i can think of that like he should be on the team or he shouldn't be on the team you know it's i think i think they've got a good good mix of, of players and they've got veterans they've got youngsters right um yeah i mean that top that top three trio of mcelroy rom and hovland is yeah that, that's pretty, who that's definitely the trio that team europe will be counting on it's a pretty good core to have carry the weight mm -hmm. yeah and then I, I just i love the way this this team makeup is because hypothetically if you know, the, the Abergs, the Hoygars, even the Straka. You know, I mean, these guys kind of light it up and show that they're capable. I mean, all of a sudden, the dynamic of future Ryder Cups changes mm -hmm. pretty drastically, uh, where suddenly you have a lot of uh, kind of promise on the Team Europe side, where there wasn't much of it uh, a little bit ago. And I am excited for this also because it's a different dynamic, of course, a little bit. From what I understand, the course is... You know, past Ryder Cups in Europe in the last maybe couple decades have sort of been the, the shorter, tighter course that is more target golf. But it seems like this course is built more for the longer driver. And then you kind of, you know, you, you see that and you're like, well, why would you do that if Team USA's guys are hitting the ball so long? But then you look at Team Europe's yeah, roster now and you realize, bombers. you know, they're kind of yeah bomber heavy too. Well, Rory is definitely the longest yeah. in, in the whole the whole mm -hmm. thing and you know rom hits it far hovland hits it plenty far hoygard and aberg both yep. bomb it mcintyre can bomb it mm -hmm. so yeah it should be it should be uh should be a fun fun week for for driving the ball for sure yeah it'll be a lot of fun uh as always there's always you know especially you get into sunday singles if it's close at all you're gonna get those guys fired up a uh, lot of emotion uh so with that said I'll ask you a couple more questions here. And if, is there a, number one, is there a dream singles matchup where let's say like you could, I could tell you right now, it will come down to this matchup on Sunday. What would you want to see entertainment wise? Oh man, you could go so many different, I know, I know. different routes. For I'm going to make you pick one. <laughs> um, 
Man, I'd probably have to just say like Scotty versus Rory or yeah. or one of the other European top guys. You know, you want to see the you want to see the best players competing, and you know if it if it came down to one match, I think you know the the number one player on each side would be the easiest yeah. choice. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'd say Scotty versus Rory, but it'd also be super fun to see like a you know, like a Harmon versus McIntyre short, it would. you know, the short <laughs> yeah, lefties. lefties yeah. yeah. Like match up like that, you know, two rookies and yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a million different, yeah. different I'm, thoughts and ways you could go with that question, but I'd I'm probably gonna, go with the big dogs. I'm going to throw a curveball at, at, at this one because I think it would be awesome to have coming down to the wire, you know, the teams are neck and neck and it's Justin Thomas for team USA. Yeah against a Rory or I, I doubt Rory will be the, the last matchup. So we're probably thinking like a, you know, most likely a Fleetwood or a, a Hatton maybe are kind of going head to head. But just the, cause I know JT and his like emotion that he expresses in, 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 uh, in the heat of the moment, watching that given the narratives and the discussion around him uh, down yeah. the stretch. And if you're able to pull it off, I think that would be for me the best way to, kind of have this Ryder Cup conclude would be for, sure. for him there, to kind of cap it off with the win like that. Yeah, there would definitely be some added emotion in oh, there yeah. for JT if it came down to him on on Sunday. Definitely. That would be fun. Yeah, but I mean, any combination of matchups and, and ways this thing could finish is certainly going to be entertaining. So now the, the question that um, we're kind of wrapping with here, and it makes only makes sense that we got to wrap it this way, but have to make a choice here. Is it a win for Team USA? Is it a win for Team Europe? Or is it a tie in which Team USA retains the cup? I don't think it's going to be a tie. And I'm actually going to I'm going to go with Europe. You are. I'm okay. going to go with the underdogs this week. I think, you know, they've got they have the home home crowd advantage. And I just I just really believe in those youngsters on their team. Yeah. And I think they're I think they're going to show up and I think they're going to they're going to come through for them. Yeah, if they're if they're not afraid of the moment, and there's I think there's a fair reason to think they might be. Just it's completely mm-hmm. different than anything they've done before, any type of golf they've played before. Um, they may have played you know Walker Cup or, or any other type of team golf, but I mean this is just such an elevated stage that I can certainly understand if there would be some kind of stage fright there. But if they're up for it, it's going to be a really fun Ryder Cup. Um, I'm going to go with Team USA A because I want to be on the other side as you yeah. and just you know, have the different uh, viewpoint. But I just think Team USA has got so much star power. Mm-hmm. Right? I think once you get like on Team Europe, once you get past McElroy, Rahm, and Hovland, I think it's sort of there's a there's a drop off that's somewhat noticeable there. But I think on Team USA, it's not a steep drop off. It's kind of a slow decline, if you will. Yeah. You go from you know Scotty Scheffler, and then you go you know Cantlay, Max Homa is kind of right there. You know Jordan Spieth is right there. Xander Shoffley's right there. Colin Morikawa is yeah, right there. Yeah. I mean guys the fact are, that you have just, all the those, punches keep coming yeah. from these guys right in and around the top ten. So there's, I think there's a there's a more depth in that sense. On yeah. Team USA, but um, I think there's more firepower to be had and, and maybe seen at the at the bottom for of the sure right yeah there. no i i think there's certainly a chance that that team usa runs away with it and it's not even close but you know i'm i'm hoping that's not the case i want to see a competitive competitive finish and i just like i said i think i think the europeans you know on home soil i think they're gonna punch above their yeah. weight i mean they haven't Team USA has not won the Ryder Cup in Europe, I don't believe, in my lifetime. It's been a long it's like time. Yeah, like 92 or 93, something like that. Yeah. It was the last time. So um, hoping, uh, as a, an American golf fan, that we get to see history made this weekend Certainly. in Italy. But yeah. um, Pierce will have some more stuff on the Ryder Cup at, online on the blog, so stay tuned for that. But otherwise, thank you for joining, um, previewing the Ryder Cup with us. I know we're all very excited for it. And... Um, It should be a really fun event to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it.